So there is a lot more in the book about hand motion and stability that we are going to talk about in this class. So hand therapy is considered a specialized form of therapy. And so basically we, we just want to hit the basics. Um, we don't want to get into specialty areas. In your upper extremity orthopedic class, you will talk a little bit more about hand therapy and dysfunction in particular. And um, it's very interesting, but we will not be talking about it in this class. So a lot of the book, a lot of the detail information in the book, you'll not be responsible for. I don't expect you to know the different arches of the hand. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, I hope, um, that the arches of the hand are good for grasping onto things like picking apples, holding on to, you know, holding on to spears, um, you know, channel your inner caveman and see what all those things are for. Um, in lab, you'll get to talk about different grips and, you know, try different things, but um, really not to the level of detail that is in the text. So um, this is a little bit of uh, some of the learning objectives cross over the different lectures, the different joint types and motions available at the joints. Um, what's different about some movements from the movements of the other joints. And we talked a little about that in the last lecture. And then the point of reference for ab and adduction, of course, is the middle finger. So the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb, the motions occur primarily in two degrees of freedom. Ab and adduction generally occur in the sagittal plane and flexion extension in the frontal plane. Um, opposition and reposition of the thumb incorporate the two primary planes of motion. So opposition is touching the other fingertips and reposition is going back to anatomical position. So it's basically two degrees of freedom, but um, you can think of it as two plus, two plus, because we have that opposition as well. So ab and adduction in neutral, the adduction position of the thumb lies within the plane of the hand. Um, so maximum abduction positions the thumb metacarsal about 45 degrees anterior to the plane of the palm. So if you're standing in an anatomical position and you move your thumb anteriorly, that is abduction of the thumb. Full abduction performs a, uh, forms a wide concave curvature useful for grasping objects or doing sock puppets. I know that's not really a functional task, is it? But hey, that's what you use that for. So when you do flexion and extension of the CMC thumb joint, um, there is a little bit of metacarpal spinning. That is another one of those accessory motions that there's not a muscle that does that. It's not voluntary. It's not like, oh, I'm going to spin my thumb around. Um, there's just a little bit of spinning of the metacarpal in conjunction with the regular movements. So during flexion, it rotates slightly medially and during extension, it rotates slightly laterally. Do you need to know that? Probably not, but just suffice it to say there's a lot of motion in the thumb. So with flexion and, flexion and extension of the um, carpometacarpal joint, you can, you can see the axial rotation by watching the orientation of the thumbnail between full extension and full flexion. Um, and in, in anatomical position, the CMC joint can be extended um, about a, an additional 10 to 15 degrees from just relaxed anatomical position. From full extension, the thumb metacarpal flexes across the palm about 45 to 50 degrees. So um, I don't expect you to know the exact degrees, but just to know what the, I mean, I'm just telling you this just so you can um, get a concept of what the range of motion is. So opposition, the first thumb metacarpal abducts, then the abducted metacarpal flexes and medially rotates across the palm towards the small finger. So it's a combination movement, combination of flexion, flexion and abduction. Um, the muscle force helps guide and rotate the metacarpal to the extreme medial side of the articular surface of the trapezium. So the small finger um, contributes indirectly by um, curling so the thumb can more easily contact it. So you'll see a lot of times when you're um, trying to regain hand function after an injury, 
opposition is one of the exercises that you do. It's also nice for just working your joints if you have arthritis. And when someone's in the warm pool, that's a nice time to do it or in warm water. The knuckles of the fingers are the articulations that are formed between the convex um, heads of the metacarpals and the shallow concave proximal surfaces of the proximal phalanges. Um, at the metacarpal phalangeal joints, the MCP joints, the motion occurs predominantly in two planes, flexion and extension in the sagittal plane and ab and adduction in the frontal plane. Just like a lot of our other joints, that makes it easy. The thumb is the only one that's weird. The interphalangeal joints are formed between the articulation between the heads of the proximal phalanges and the basis, bases of the middle phalanges for the proximal interphalangeal joints. For the distal interphalangeal joints, it's the head of the middle phalanges and the bases of the distal phalanges. Makes sense. And they do flexion and extension in the sagittal plane. So of course the thumb has to be different. You know how the thumb is. <laughs> It's the interphalangeal joint of the thumb doesn't have a lot of movement. It's primarily one degree of freedom, about 70 degrees of active flexion, but the IP joint of the thumb can be passively hyperextended beyond neutral about 20 degrees. And the motion's often employed to apply force between the pad of the thumb and an object. So one of the precision grips that we use that's special about the thumb is a, um, pad of the thumb to side of the finger grip. It's like holding onto a key and turning it. So say you have this ancient medieval key and it's this big key and you have to really put some force in there to turn it. That passive hyper extension of the thumb could come in handy then. Um, or like the picture suggests here, if you're scraping a hide with a, um, a stone knife because you're a caveman, um, that hyperextension of the thumb really comes in handy for applying force. So the thumb, it's the weirdo of the group for sure. <laughs>